In terms of like initiated one of his activities. Yeah, but that's it. That's all we've established, yeah. right? We haven't established so his that God has a mind, that God has a will. How do you know God has any of So you know will include because the universe doesn't have to exist. I agree. Yeah, but it does exist. So therefore it requires a will for it no, to no, exist. No, where, where's the where's the statement the universe couldn't exist? Where do you then derive the information? So like the further um, so like the bag for example required the will for it to exist. If there wasn't a will, then it wouldn't have come into existence in the first saying, place. I'm saying, I'm coming back to the induction problem. Just because everything we observe has to come into being that way, it doesn't mean we couldn't find 10 billion light rays away something that just exists. So what's the proof that the universe came into existence without a will? What, what's the proof or the reason that the universe came into existence without a will? See, that question once again is going to what is the reason? So that presupposes there's a will, there's something thinking to have that happen. So that's yeah. a presupposition to your belief, which we haven't established. Yeah. It's, it's, it's based upon the universe wouldn't have existed if there was no will. See, how, do you, how, do you, but how do you know that's, that's like true? The, just like the bag wouldn't have existed no, 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 no. if there wasn't a will claim. behind it. That's an inductive claim. If I, were, if I grew up in India, right, and I said to you, I never saw a white person. I said all people are brown because everywhere I go, people are brown, and I haven't found any white people or any black people. That doesn't remain true the second I step out of that. So anyway, we exist in one place on Earth, and we observe the whole of existence. No, so we cannot assert that every in every case something is true if we haven't actually seen it, because this is a priori knowledge, knowledge that we come to with experience, right? We can't, ass we can't make these big assertions. Yeah, but the difference is, is like, um, like regardless of people's language, culture, religion or, or, or race, we accept these kind of ba basic principles. Like, um, so for something to exist, it requires the will, uh, no, no, the absence of will. Everyone. Even you do. Like no, 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 no. You, you accept no, no, no. it in the case of your bag, but you don't in the case of the universe. Does water have a will? So water's not consciousness. Exactly, but yet, if water but the, flows, yeah. if water flows against rocks, it can change all the rock is, right? So it has it has an ability to change something with no will. So we can clearly see already from your example that this idea that something cannot happen without a will, simply not true. Because yeah. if nature does stuff without a will, and yet something does. Yeah, with that, that's more to do with the laws of physics. No, 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 but your assertion um, is a necessary proposition saying in all cases, in all cases, you cannot have something come that has no will. That's what you're saying. Wow. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, well, we're speaking about inanimate objects rather than animate yeah, but you're objects. Saying, you're saying nothing can yeah. happen by something that doesn't have a will. That's what you're saying. So, something cannot come into existence. Something that exists okay, so something exists, exists without, without a will. So have we observed everything there is to exist? Uh, apart from experience, exactly. like it, it comes to the problem yeah. of induction. We're just going to yeah. say, based on all our induction, that that's true. But have we observed everything to know that in all cases that's true? Um, so, are you talking about the problem of induction? Yeah. 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 Are you pro science or anti science? Like, are you no, coming from atheistic, agnostic? I, I'm not very good at science. I'm a philosopher. I'm not going to go into Ah, philosophy. Yeah, I'm not going to go into science because I'll destroy my That's fine. That's That's fine. What's your name? Anand. 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 Do you, do you believe this in Zishan? Zishan. Anand? A -N -A Ananda. Ananda? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hindu? Buddhist. Buddhist. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, born Buddhist or converted yeah. to Buddhism? Born, born. born Buddhist. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So your your issue is with regards to the scientific process? No, 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 no. He's just discussing to me about creation about his beliefs. So I'm just being so trying to contain that. Uh, I'm trying to ask him why do we believe these things are true? I haven't made any counter argument to say, oh, this is why I don't believe X is true. He's just saying I believe X is true. I'm saying how do you? Because we agree that there is a first cause, right? Principal cause. I'm saying how do we know that has a mind? How do we know it has a will? How do we come to those conclusions? Right? That's what I'm saying. Okay. What conclusions have you come to already? So at least because rather than us making up or just reinventing the wheel, 
Let's agree on the things that both of us sure. agree so on like anyway. I'm, so like I'm saying, I agree logically, different regrets cannot be true. There is some prime thing that causes other things, or other things. I agree there, right? What I want to, want to hear is the, how we bridge the gap to a God with a mind, a God with a will, a God who wants you to act this way, a God who doesn't want you to act that way. How do we get to those things, right? Okay, so you you do believe in a in a prime mover, as it were, yeah. As a prime mover. Yes. Okay, so that prime mover naturally, you you accept that there was no one before him, yeah. Absolutely. Right. I don't know about no one. I understand there is some. There's no being before that I'm, being. I'm, I mean, I'm not even saying it's a being yet. I'm saying how do we even know it's a being in the way that you guys meet? I'm saying that all I know is there's a primary first cause. Right. That's it. Okay. Now I'm trying to ask how do we know what that is? Okay. So when when we look at. <laughs> Yeah. So this is, this, is my, this is my first big yeah. one, everyone's watching me right like now. Like a this Christmas is, tree, yeah. yeah. This is tense, I bet I'm in a shit argument. You know what? I mean? <laughs> you know what? There's, there's no, there's, there's no, like you say, uh, uh, we can attribute to that. Okay, great. Yeah? That's a great start. Lovely. Okay. Okay, so, so we have, we have independence. Hashimiki come as well? Yeah. You can come as well? Yeah, you can come as well. <laughs> So, so you got independence. Okay. I agree. Now, when you're familiar with the contingency argument, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's I'm not going with the, the, the causation argument, even though both of them can be melded into one. Okay, yeah. I'm going with the dependency argument. Okay. You can't have an infinite regress of dependent things. Therefore, there has to be a necessary being at the end of the chain. I agree. Yeah. So the necessary being is whom we're dealing with now. We acknowledge that it has to be independent. So when the necessary being from the necessary being comes something contingent now the question is that contingent thing why is it one way and not another way that's our question you understand where I'm going yeah, yeah. so the fact that it's one way and not another way when it could be any other way shows that the the independent being has a will uh, I don't know that so will the thing is look you it's logical for you to assume that the independent being has a will reason being if for example the car could be red blue or green you seem really cold uh -huh. <laughs> do you have like a coat or no, anything no, i was warm when i left the house to be real but i'll be good i'm good uh, ma, 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 ma. lovely sentiments man. you know what let me give you my let no, me no, give you my no, thing no. you know what i'm actually not cold no, no, but please, seeing please. you shiver it's gonna make me no, I'm good. I don't feel uncomfortable or anything like that. I'm as soon as you do, bro, I've got a shirt underneath. I appreciate that. I'll that's, give you my one. Very lovely sister. The only thing, the only reason I looked at you, I was looking at your build and we're both uh, equally skinny, so we're good. Yeah, but don't worry, I'm fine. I'm as fine. soon, bro, please. <laughs> no, no, honestly. As no, soon that's, as... That's lovely. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. So, so yeah. yeah, so red, blue, green. If I opt for red as opposed to blue and green, yeah. I'm making a choice. I'm willing. That's, that's a sign of a will yeah that it's one way and not any other way so the fact that you have a contingent creation that's emerging that's being formed and it could be one way not any other way okay. indicates logically that there has to be a will it's actually a Ghazalian argument I'm sure okay so I'm gonna ask you, when you say will does it have to be something that's okay so what I really want to ask is what do you take a will to mean and what do you take the nature of God's will to be Obviously, we're not going to say that God has a series of thoughts one after the other. We're not going to say that. It can't be a temporal chain of thoughts, right? So, in what way does God's will act the way it's going to? So, when, when we're talking about will here, I'm going to keep it very simple. Um, very similar to the question or the example that I gave. That the fact that something is one way and not another way indicates a choice being made. See, but I don't know if it indicates an intelligent choice being made. It can be something that's no problem. Right? But we can we can put it on ice. But sure. we can see, we can I agree, logic. I agree so. Yeah, okay, okay. So bro, you're more than welcome to jump in at any time. <laughs> I'm just learning, just think learning. Yeah, any any time bro, just, just jump in. So so now we've we've got will, yeah? Yeah. Now, when, when, when you look at what's around us, the contingencies of the universe, because the universe is contingent, would you say that the universe is intelligent? 
There's in, the universe, in of itself. The, 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 there is intelligence. Derived in the universe. The, yeah, there is intelligence within the universe. Yeah, so are you going to say that intelligence may all arise from something that's not intelligent? Yeah, so I'm saying that again with intelligence. See, that comes back to induction. Okay, go ahead. So inductively, how we observe all ways in which intelligence comes from? No, at the moment we're talking about thought in experiments. We're not talking about us having to, and, and that you don't necessarily have to observe everything. For example, a necessary being. You've agreed to that, but we don't. But we, necessary things are true by their very nature. We're talking about a necessary statement. We're talking about a contingent statement. So you're talking about deduction, yeah? Yes. Okay. So I'm saying that when we're coming to this conclusion that it, oh, it should be this, it should be that, how do we reason that that's through intellect and not through some natural activity? Okay, so if if let's let's just carry this on. So we're we're on intelligence at the moment. So if there is intelligence, would you say that intelligence can come from non-intelligence? I'm saying that I have not observed all ways in which intelligence comes from. So I cannot assert. I can say I think it's logical based on what I can induct right now. That's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Which so is fine, so we so this the, let's make two distinctions here. The first distinction is for us to know truth and certainty. We're not claiming truth or certainty. You'd agree that's too logic and rationale, right? Yeah, so what, what I would say is we're trying to arrive to the inference to the best explanation. So the inference to the best, best explanation... Possibilities. Sorry? Possibilities. Okay, is that inference to the best explanation? Kind of, you know like Occam's razor? No, Occam's razor is different. So you're not trying to say that basically because... It, it's Occam's normal. razor says that it's sometimes the simplest things that are the answer as opposed to kind of. yeah that's a very simplified yeah. kind of way I'm kind of more putting this in to say that while there could be other answers this stands to be the most viable that would be no i'm saying it's the it's the most logical of the the possibilities so the most valid try a different way okay you can say valid sure. yeah yeah so what makes us decide that this is the one so it doesn't even know for example you could say in like a murder case oh the boyfriend was in the house and the girlfriends were murdered it's yeah very very logical to say it was him right yeah but we just we don't account for the fact that it could any number of other things could happen in contingent things in contingent scenarios right and when we're talking about contingent things i don't know how we decide that because there's just one answer and it seems more logical why do we decide then that that is the answer right what gives us that certainty so the thing here is when you take one thing by itself, for example, will, our argument's not being made solely by the will. Yeah. So it's will, we look at power, we look at intelligence, and then we go on from there. So what we're doing is we're scaffolding an argument, and then we're taking the inference to the best explanation from that. Now, again, we can attack the argument from different aspects, but when you're saying no, we have to have something that's objectively certain and no, objectively I'm, I'm true. I'm not saying we have to, I'm saying what gives one that certainty. But, th but that's what I'm saying. I'm not claiming certainty. Okay. Yeah. Right, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I said inference to the best explanation. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did, did I claim certainty? Maybe. No, 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 no. I was just asking what Okay, yeah, 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 no worries, no worries. <laughs> yeah, so power. Yeah, I would also argue that the necessary being also has power as well. Because power gets... It sets in motion all things. Right? Yeah, so power... So motion has to have some stuff where that has push. Yeah, sure. so power comes from something with power, in other words. Okay, great, great. So you've got power, you've got intelligence, you've got will. These sorts of things make sense. Yeah, I agree so yeah. far, this is great. Yeah, so where where would you say that we're disagreeing? Because it seems like we're... Okay, so, so far, yeah. I haven't quite say disagreed. Obviously, this guy I had a few conversations with, obviously, very different um, way that you've approached it, right? But you've approached it very, very clear, point to point. So this is great. So I haven't really disagreed. I just asked him to explain why we come to his understanding. And you've yeah. done that very excellently. You've come to explain to very excellently why you have to come to right? So I don't... I have no disagreement so far with everything you say. I agree completely. So then how do we then come to believing, okay, for example, I want to ask, when God created everything, right? Yeah. Is that one all-encompassing thought that encompasses all creation? Or is there a series of thoughts? Sorry? So when God creates everything, right? Okay, so when you say God, yeah, yeah let me... Uh, We're just defining it the way that we have so far. Yeah, so the... Mm, Okay. As a will, it has power. 
it has it has some sort of intent. Right. right. So here now, we what we do is we reach a juncture here. So we say that this independent being that has these following characteristics. Now, what does Islam say? So I'm what I'm now doing is I'm giving you the Islamic conception, and we're seeing if it's. Uh, yeah. So so the aqidah, so aqidah in Islam. I mean, what is yours? Is Muslim. So you don't you don't particularly hold like an Ashair or Maturidi or Atari Salafi position. I'm I'm a Muslim. We um, no not not on camera because then what happens is certain people. And you know, things so get blown out of proportion. So I don't know whether you're going to say like, you know, like an Asher would say, when Allah descends, you know, it's heaven, they're going to say in some way that it repeats its majesty, they're going to say the angels come down and give mercy and become a blessing, right? Right. Whereas Asher is going to say, no, no, no. I'm, let me give, let, let me even go to something more fundamental than that. Okay. So the four-pronged approach of any Muslim, regardless of the Aqeedah or whatnot, they take one of the last chapters of the Quran, which, because you're familiar with Ashari Maturidi, maybe you're familiar with the chapter as well. It's called the Surah Ikhlas, yeah. chapter of Ikhlas. Yes, you, you know your stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm a religious studies student. Uh, at a university level or? Oh, one day. One day okay, soon. so you're, you're doing independent studies? Independent studies. I'm starting in September. Okay, uh, university? No, I had to do, I did a bit bad at school, so I had to do the access course route and then get into uni. But I'm Bro, I mean, you, you seem like you're on the right on the right track. Hey, you're not you're not unintelligent yourself. You know, <laughs> you're not intelligent yourself. <laughs> so, so the thing here is, when it comes to the four pronged approach, say he is God the one, the independent. Sorry. That the Saudi. That's. Allahu Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah we, we're just saying very basic, very simple. So you're not even talking about you're not even talking about types of Saudi. No, no, I'm not going into that. I'm just saying so with something very fundamental. Something when it comes to Aqidah and stuff like that, you can debate with, yeah. you, with the Sheikh and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Because the thing with that is, again, you need a, yeah, a specialized form of knowledge. I don't claim to be a scholar. No, no, I can. I, I completely respect that. Yeah, you yeah. asked me a question I didn't know, I wouldn't want you to be like, I'll answer right now. You know, like, I'm going to leave. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So fundamentally, the belief of every Muslim is say he is God the one, independent, doesn't beget nor is he begotten and there's none like unto him. So if somebody now comes up with the criteria and says, oh, so and so is God, um, that person's God, uh, what do you think? I will say, and sometimes, you know, even when I'm discussing with people, I say, okay, what would be your criteria for a God? And a person would say, okay, he has to be strong, he has to be this, he has to be that. Sure, so what you're saying is that the, sort of the criteria that maybe someone like Aquinas is giving for what the necessary thing is, you say that the, the attribute that God claims to have in the Quran, you say that aligns ontologically with that. Yeah, so Aquinas, uh, what, just remind me what Aquinas... So Aquinas is just saying the first, the, the unmoved move, uh, you know, air, all objects have motion, in order for an object to have motion, it must be moved by another thing. We cannot have an infinite regress of movers, therefore it's unmoved. And that, that argument stands independent of any Trinitarian, any particular religion. The, the five ways are purely designed to just prove that there is a necessary being. Right. And then you move on to the of how we've gone from the necessary being established, and then you go to why is that Allah in your view, right? That's nice, you've got the lingo. Uh... Yeah, I want my best friends are this thing. Okay, and you, you have these discussions with yeah, him yeah, as well, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I mean, fine. Let's talk since I kind of go to the deeper, deeper side of things. He's like, listen, like, that's not, I'm just a regular Muslim guy, you know, okay. so we're out here discussing sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So that's why I'm saying that, look, as, as a regular Muslim guy or somebody that, you know, wants to know about God, as a Muslim, the yardstick or the pH test that we've been given is Surah Ikhlas. Yeah. So then from there, you've got Atida Tahawi, the Tahawiyah. And then from there is the interpretation of the Aqeedah Tahawiya that you'll get the Asharis, the Maturis, sure, sure. and the Atharis and the likes. And for that, you can go to specialized knowledge. But fundamentally, like there being a prime mover, that prime mover has a will, has intelligence, has power. It's not, con it's not logical that that prime mover having power and, and having, you know, uh, contingent creations, it doesn't make sense for him to leave us be because we're, de we're dependent upon him it makes sense if for example there are a, a bunch of religions 
Yeah, human beings, we have an innate disposition to believe in a, in a, in a, and I'm so conscious I'm seeing you shivering and it's no, good, making I'm me good. feel so bad. <laughs> no, I'm really good, don't worry. Okay, so uh, when there's, uh, we believe that there's an innate disposition, that a lot of people be uh, believe in a God in an, uh, in a, in a afterlife. Yeah, the, the Fitra, they believe in an afterlife, they believe in a God. So when so many religions believe that there is a being, that there is a prophet of sorts, that there is a book of sorts, then it makes sense for us to say, okay, philosophically it makes sense, yeah, Ration, so rational, uh, rationally it makes sense, teleologically, um, when you look around us, you can, yeah, it, it makes sense that there's a purpose and then there's, you know, everything else, uh, everything around us has a purpose, therefore we must also have a purpose as well make sense okay that we didn't sporadically just come into being just come into existence so then it then coalesces into three kind of everyday discussions which is okay when you see everything around you would you say that there's, that there's a fourth option with this that the universe or us included in the universe we were created um, we created ourselves or we were created from nothing do you believe that there's a, a further option that maybe I haven't mentioned? No, I don't think it's that. When Which you say, of, yeah. So when you say we are created, yeah. how does that distinction from we are created from nothing? What's the distinction between those two? So when, when you say we're created from nothing, typically, atheistically, that refers to sporadically, like you know the Big Bang, they say yeah. there was nothing, then there was something. Kind of, kind of. That's, I'm not, I'm not going to talk on that too much because I'm no, no good at science. But yeah. I understand they assert some principle called the Schrödinger effect, which is do two things ripping apart and creating space. I understand that's what they say. I'm no science man. But when you say created from nothing versus just created, I'm asking what is the just created? What does that mean in distinction to from nothing? You took, you're asking about nothing, like how? Yeah, you said you said there's three options that we are created. Yes. We create ourselves and we create from nothing. I'm saying, what do you mean in the first? Thing? Yeah. So it's very simple. If I have, for example, a set of keys in my hand. Yeah. Yeah. If oh, those, oh, you're just saying that it's created from something else. Yeah. So created from nothing means that it wasn't there and then suddenly it's popped into existence. No, 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 I get that, but I'm saying, I was yeah. just saying what you meant when you said created from. I just thought, I didn't know what you meant. Oh, okay, first, okay, okay. First one, but now I know what you mean. So from something else, creating its own circle. Yes, yes, yes. So when I say created, then I would say that, okay, if we, if we analyze the, the discussions of the inference to the best explanation, this is what we're coalesced to. That either we, we came from nothing, either we created ourselves, or either we were created. I would give the last one so far. Yeah, that's what we're establishing. Yeah, so when we look at, okay, what, okay, so we're created. Okay, so now that we're created, what logically would follow? Many gods, a monotheistic god. So then I would assert my next point. I Again, agree. we're just going to go on sort of like a Neo Platonic sort of understanding. Yeah, very simple thing that if yeah. the Clash of the Titans, sure, if sure. they were. We're not going to say there's multiple beings with an independent will and all power. That's not going to work. Sure. Exactly. Absolutely. Some people have this polytheistic or, you know, the Trinitarian notion that. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't say, listen, my understanding of the Trinity is not that God is three ontologically separate beings in separate worlds. They're going to say that God has one divine essence, three underlying realities. I, I don't think that's holy. I wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say, say I wouldn't that? I wouldn't say that's politics. Right. But um, how have you understood that? Because till this day, I find it difficult to kind of understand that. Uh, you know, that once again, maybe you need to read some Aquinas. Maybe that's the, that's the trick. Aquinas answers all the was questions. Was he a Trinitarian? Absolutely. He was a Catholic theologian of the 12th century and the best of the whole. Hmm. And I'm not a Catholic, very much once again. Yeah, but yeah. His work is, is any question like from Protestants, they are independent of this tradition, so they don't have they don't have something they lean back to like a giant like a plant. It's kind of like your Ibn Taymiyyah or your Ibn Avicenna, Ibn Sina, so those of you, those great Ibn Imam Malik, people you can fall back on to establish your views. Yeah. The Protestants don't have so when a lot of times the Protestants debate it, they're not wrong. But if you come to a smart Catholic theologian, they can answer all your questions. And I'll be honest, because I've had those conversations, they can explain how Trinity works, they can explain how incarnation works, they can they can overcome the logical problems which is the observe it myself, right? So when, when they say the Trinity, they're just pointing to three underlying realities. So one is saying 
that the Father is God, is God here and God exists in all his ontological nature. The Father is God. Yeah, and we're also saying that God has knowledge of himself, right? And we're going to say that God's knowledge is identical to himself. All right. So they're going to say the Son is God's knowledge of himself because it's identical to him and yet your knowledge of yourself is you but it's not when you say knowledge of the self you mean consciousness like of my, my awareness no, no, not like not like uh, you and mine I'm talking about evidence that it exists the, 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 the evidence is there what's your oldest hadith book for example the, the oldest hadith book are you talking about in terms of manuscripts yeah, yeah no but why suddenly have you gone to manuscripts when it's come to hadith but when it came to trinity you said okay but we've got church yeah, fathers well, if you have extra evidence you can bring that in i'm just asking what is your no, no, no. I, didn't, I didn't say just manuscripts you just asked me do i do if manuscripts acceptable i didn't say just no manuscripts. no no i said i said yeah, are we looking at just manuscripts no, no, okay we're not we can bring okay. in other if you have writings that also reference this material at the time i'll take that so yeah right so l let me explain this point isnad is something incredibly simple yeah. So this person said to this person said to this person. Yeah. Let me just finish the point, yeah? It's not this incredibly simple. So if you were just to wander over there to the cameraman and say, Oh, um, I was told this and, and then talks, yeah, yeah, and the, then he says, Okay, where did you get that from? And you point yeah, yeah, over there yeah. and you go, Oh, um, Zishan told me. Yeah, exactly. That's actually an it's not. Yeah, it's no, a chain. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's my so, problem. So that... no, wait, wait, let me just finish, yeah? So to say that, oh no, when did Isnad come? Uh, no, it, it wasn't there okay, at the time me, of the let Prophet. Let me be more particular with what I mean. Right. I mean to say, when do we have written records that so and so said X? Why do we need written records because when it's an oral... we verify that? We verify it through an oral tradition. That's what... We, and who's given us the oral tradition? So the oral tradition, the way Isnad is verified, is if something is, is an oral tradition, it will rely on the spoken word. Exactly, For, right? Yeah, You're but right, even right. even the spoken word will have criteria. But, you see where there's but be then no, 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 no. But then you've got spoken word. But I'm not saying spoken word independently. Who decided which hadith was sahih and daif? So for example, we take Imam Abu Qari, Imam Muslim. Take these are people that that went through and saw to do all the hadith, right? No. No. So Imam Abu Qari didn't compile a sahih al Bukhari. What you're doing is you're saying, okay, Imam Muslim and Imam Bukhari did those people. No, they weren't the only people to do it. No, I'm not saying they're the only. I'm saying we can take those as two. Yeah, I'm okay. Right? You might not be saying that, but I have to clarify. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. No so, so I'm when we're we when we're talking about Isnad, Isnad is as simple as yeah, yeah. Abdullah bin Mas'ud saying to his student Al Qama, I heard from the Prophet that he said this. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's what Isnad is. It's a chain of narration. Yeah, now, you're going to judge that, right? then we're going to judge that. Yeah. yeah. Who's going to judge that? It's people that are thicker. Yeah. People that that have certain criteria. They are honest. They we know their tribes. We know yeah. their families. That's great, There's right? a criteria. So once again, we're using this term we know, right? So we know that means we have some knowledge of the thing. But I'm going to assert that Imam Bukhari didn't meet most of the people in his it's not changed. He doesn't meet most of the people who are Why why are you going to Imam Bukhari? Well, it's just an example, it's your most major hadith for the six Sahih books, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not lacking, I'm not saying I know Sunan and Nasai and Timur Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just Imam Bukhari is a common usage one we're going to speak about, right? What else I'm gonna assert is that if he doesn't know these people how is he coming to the knowledge to be character judgment about them to say any? If he has no actual, like me saying, oh, you tell me about your grandmother, and I just say, you say your grandmother's a good person, she might actually be, you know, I'm not respectful of what I'm saying about this, she might be a liar, she might be saying, oh, you just believe that you your grandmother. And I go and say, oh, this one's grandmother told me, said this to him, and then, but how do I know the character of that person that I'm meeting? How is a man of Bukhari coming to be by character judgments? Okay, so there's. Sorry, there's sorry, there's, sorry. There's, oh, it's broken, that's right. Okay. So when we look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him yeah, yeah. is somebody who's verified, who's accepted, agree, we I don't agree. question. The constitution when, of Medina dates back yeah, to when, it, when we talk about the companions, again, they're accepted, we they're know accepted them. They're accepted as existed. what we're saying is that... No, there's an, there's an explicit ver verse of the Qur'an that says Radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. Yeah, that I am pleased with them and they are pleased with us. So we don't raise our fingers with regards to the companions. No, no, I'm not talking about the companions. I'm saying that there is a chain of people in between. Let me finish, let me finish. So you've got the Prophet, you've got the companions, yeah? Then you've got the Tabi'een. Yeah, the Tabi'een, that's where the Imam Abu Hanifa came in. Yeah? So then, no, no, no. Because the thing is, what, what you're doing is you jump, you're jumping the gun. So the thing is, 
you got the Prophet, yeah. you got the companions, yeah. we know about them, that's fine, they, they've got biographies, the, the information is there, people know about them, fantastic. Then we move on to the Tabi'een, yeah? Imam Abu Hanifa. At the time of Imam Abu, Imam Abu Hanifa, then interpolations start coming in. He's got a book called Kitab al as well, yeah. which is a compilation of the book of Hadith. In fact, there are certain chains that there's like three people, there's two people, sure. so the, the chains are very small. Okay. So, okay. yeah. I've never heard of this before, so it's new knowledge from Yeah, me. that's why at the start I was, I was trying to give you the analogy of a chain. And when you said, no, 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 the, the chain is something that's longer, I said, no, the chain could be as simple as two people in a park and one person asserting sure. something. Okay. So even at the time of the Prophet, companions would say, who have you heard that from? Yeah, Umar would ask somebody, who have you heard that from? And, and that person would say, I've heard it from the Prophet. And if the pro and if Umar, if they would the, agree. And if Umar doubted that, he would go directly to the source, directly to the Prophet. So after the Prophet, we had the companions. Then after companions, we had the Tabi'een. Now the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, look, follow my generation. Um, yeah, the, yeah, so you got the Tabi'een, yeah, and then the Atba'u Tabi'een. Yeah. I'm saying I'm using this terminology because you're familiar with it. Yeah. If again you're not, feel free to stop me. Oh, no, so then, Kitab al at the time of Imam Abu Hanifa, that's when interpolation started coming in, and that's when um, we needed biographies, we needed reliability of people, we needed the criteria. That's when fiqh was born. Okay. That's why Imam Zahabi says the father of fiqh was Imam Abu Hanifa. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and he is literally um, some, there's even an opinion to say, and it's a strong opinion. Um, in fact, actually, there's not. There's very little difference of opinion that he didn't see companions. Some say even when he was a child, um, he met Ali radiyallahu an, like the com the companion sure. Ali. The so he hasn't met the leader. Sorry. So he hasn't met the leader. No, Imam Abu Hanifa has met. Oh, so he has. Yeah, but what I'm saying is Ali was the one of the closest companions, one of the earliest people to accept Islam. So what I'm saying is that if the compilation of fiqh, sorry? Uh, just really, any something I know about Ali, that's, that's, that, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But bear in mind, uh, yeah, it's just baggage that comes with the word. But we, I mean, looking at it from a historical point of view, um, Ali, the uh, companion of the Prophet, um, yeah, so, so again, this kalam to say that again, there's difference of opinion. Some people may agree with that. Some people may disagree with sure, that. Sure, That's yeah, something. But when it comes to chains, so chains was actually started from the time of the companions. They start saying that person's reliable. That person has a weak memory and it went to the companions. Now we have manuscripts of, for example, Imam Zahabi. Yeah, he's got biographies with chains of um, of Rawis, okay. yeah, you've got Mughni, I'll mention the names, Mizan, Tazkiratul yeah. Hufaz. Um, so these are three manuals that talk about um, narrators. So these narrators, again, the criteria, I've mentioned this before as well, it was do we know their name, family, tribe? Do we know how reliable they were? Do we know their reputation? Has somebody said that they have lied? So the thing now is, and we'll go to this discussion as well, that how reliable is testimony as a form of evidence? I'll say that it's generally reliable. Gen when you say, gen what do you mean generally I'll reliable? Say, so I mean that it can be taken as reliable, but we, there can be allowance or discrepancy. Yeah. I think generally if you saw something happen yesterday, you know that you saw it, you can tell me that thing. I can allow for the fact that in your telling of the story, I may not only A, may I take the language to maybe imply something that you're not quite saying, you know, there's definitely room. A testimony cannot A, only be written, but also can maybe come across and, you know, in I language, agree with right? So I'm saying that generally I can take that if you say, I agree. I, if you say, if they say the Prophet said this, right, we can assert that they're definitely remembering a time where this man said something. Right, and it's probably very much close to what they're saying, if not exact. Right, but I don't think I can, we can make any like absolute assertions because that would be, you know, I'd be all knowing at that point, right? But no, 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 <laughs> you, you've made you made a good point, and I, I, I don't want to go too much away from that. You said testimony generally can be accepted to be true, yeah, yeah, because of course, without testimony, we can't live our daily life, there's no science, there's nothing, you can't take what your teacher's saying to be correct, yeah, you can't know anything, true. yeah, it bec becomes ridiculous, yeah, but but I guess. Uh, Ananda, yeah? yeah? So Ananda, I guess what I'm trying to say is Islam takes testimony 
it, not only seriously, it's like it's like testimony on steroids. Okay. Yeah. So whilst the peer review process would take somebody, okay, it's a scientist that scientists have said this, their PhD, etc., etc. Islam will take it f forward. It will say, okay, PhD is one thing, but who are you? Yeah, who are you? Who's your family? Were you alive like Sanad, Matan, and Tariq? Yeah. Yeah? yeah, so Sanad, Matan, and Tariq. So, were you alive at the time? Were you making that claim? That, and that is that statement that you're making aligned with the general theology? But even more fundamental than that, even more fundamental than that, um, are you truthful? What have people said about you? Are you a reliable person? Have you been known to lie before? Of course, I think yeah? valid questions. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm just going to say that I don't want to go too much further into conversation. What do you think about this so far? That's though? what I'm actually going to say. I've said that you, like, I've debated Muslims online for over a year now, and none of them has quite told me this information. I've asked this question a hundred times. I still come to ask you because I, I believe there's always going to be someone that's going to have the knowledge. You have adequately answered all the questions I came here today to ask, and I'm very happy with that. <laughs> that's very kind of you, uh, Ananda, and um, I'm glad. I'm glad you think that, but. And, and I appreciate your honesty as well. Yeah, yeah, you've answered all the questions that I previously had no answers to. That's perfectly happy. Fantastic, fantastic. But one thing I would also um, kind of put in there as well, Ananda, and, and this is something that is unique. You know, sometimes people used to ask me this and, and I didn't know the answer to this. You've all had the question of why. <laughs> not, not only the question of, it actually is a question of why, but, yeah. but you know what it was, Ananda? They, they like, why Islam? What makes Islam special? Uh, compared to the other religions. I agree, you made a very strong case today. And, and the thing with Isnad, Ananda, is, is something that's very unique. So what you're going to say now is the presentation is what, is what holds No, I'm, I'm actually going to stick with Isnad. Okay. I, and because, because before I didn't know, so, so I was kind of um, drilling the point. Now I'm just going to elaborate that point. Yeah, so you're, you're familiar with certain scholars. There's one Hadith scholar called Dar Kutni. Yeah, so Dar Kutni, um, has uh, again his own compilation of hadith and in that compilation of hadith there are 20,000 narrators yeah and there are 40 to 60,000 in fact no hadith in general there's not a, even Dara Kutni. I know Imam Abu Qari is supposed to get over 300,000 so, so <laughs> listen you, you're actually right there's 20,000 narrators and those narrators we have compiled in the books that I said, Mughni, uh, Mizan, uh, Tadkiratul Fafat. Yeah, it's over 300,000. Yeah, and it's all documented. It's, yeah. So you've got 20,000, and how many narrations? 40 to 60,000. And there's like about 50 books of, of ahadith that we have. You've got Shaybani, you've got the uh, Imam Baba Hanifa's book, Kitab al Athar. And it's, it's a ridiculous amount. Other books as well, like there's not, so but but there's the beauty, like then here's, here's what I want to say, Ananda, was Dara Kutani said that if these 20,000 narrators were standing in front of me, I could tell you their name, I could tell you the, their name. The name where they're born and their name, birth. family, and tribe, and reliability. Okay, well, I like all those answers. <laughs> so, so the thing with that is that when it comes and this is the problem that we have with the peer reviewed process let me know if you're in a, a rush or if you have to go yeah, as well I'm, my brother's debating over there for a minute he came together I'm, that's I'm, fine i want to see where he's going cracking but okay no worries <laughs> so 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 do, do, do you want to go do you want to go there yeah? yeah yeah okay how long do we have give me a rough time we, we can go for five minutes five minutes perfect perfect, perfect 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 so when when it comes to testimony when you look at, for example, the peer reviewed process, when you look at what your teacher said, what your mum said. So you're going to say, because we take them to be truthful, we can verify that the things they would have said. No, I'm just making the same point. Yeah. I'm just elaborating that. What I'm saying is that Islam holds testimony at a very high regard to such a degree that it's, we have testimony in a very unique aspect that no other faith even claims. So when it comes to people in that chain, You'll have like, oh, that church father may have said this, or that person may have said that. Oh, how do you? Oh, either we've heard, uh, but but thing is, I heard from this person, but you can't verify that chain. There are no manuals that have those rawis or narrators there. We don't have biographical evidence about them.
and I guess that's the problem and that's why when it comes to authenticity you you also made a point you said that okay no we need western people to be no, saying this we, we need western people we to say this no 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 let me tell you one thing companions of the prophet had narrations like the prophet fell off the horse yeah. The Prophet injured himself. So we're, we're just going to say that's true based on the uh, criteria? No, what, what I'm saying is that if your criteria is that people will be biased, I'm saying that that criteria, if you look even in, in Islam as well, Muslims in fact are more stricter uh, with other Muslims than non-Muslims need to be. Shall I tell you why? Because of this one narration of the Prophet peace be with, because we have a theological backing. Whilst a non-Muslim will come, and I will argue that a non-Muslim will come with no kind of fear of God, no metaphysical reason for him to say or do anything. He could be biased, he could be this or he could be that. Sure. And a Muslim, because he believes the Prophet peace be upon him, and the Prophet said, if someone attributes something to me, that is incorrect. Do not say so. That person has reserved a place in the hellfire. So, sure. in, so in other words, that one narration that that person will be saying, that's incorrect. That person has not only messed up their sure life. You wouldn't say that's because they've said it out of ignorance. You're not going to say that. Out of ignorance, if they say something. Yeah, of course, of course, not of ignorance. Sure. So, if that, so you only in that moment, it would only be implicitly be saying that someone knows that that's what you're saying. So, so the point that you're now because you brought up Imam Bukhari as well, yeah. yeah. Did you know that Imam Bukhari, every single hadith in Imam Bukhari, sorry, every single hadith in Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari <laughs> uh, has different chains yep. located in a different book called Mustakhrajat of Bujairi yes, I'm familiar and with Asbahani. Yeah. I have actually, I have not even, uh, I, have, I have Sahih al-Bukhari actually, like the actual set, like the proper set. No, no, not Sahih al-Bukhari. No, 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 it talks about it in the introduction. Okay. Yeah, so those, that those narrations have been um, corroborated in a different book by a different author with a different um, methodology. So, 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 uh, so I didn't know that's what you wanted. So it's good we got there at yeah, the end. Otherwise, I'm, a, I could... I'm an historical man. Also, as well as we study, I study history. That's so, so I'll say on camera as well. Yeah. Mustakhrajat of Asbahani and. I think it was. I mean, if I can know what this video is, I'll go back and watch it, and I'm gonna go get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because obviously, when I'm having discussions with Muslims online, they're not telling me all these things. They're not telling me, oh, this is true, that is true. We get this from here. There's this other thing. They just don't really have always the answers. So now I have more historical information to go look at. Like, that's amazing. You've really opened up kind of a whole new new chapter of a book in a sense, right? So it was Bujairi and Asbahan. Yeah, so the point that I'm trying to say is that you have certain narrations which are corroborated by the people. Now, when you're talking about testimony, I, th I thought you were alluding to this. It's not a single chain. When you're talking about a single chain, not everybody will take that to be an Aqeedah statement. For example, there's... Because it's not corroborated. Because it's not corroborated and so, again... So I'm familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Don't worry about that. Yeah, so are you are you aware of um, uh, you know like the the, the, the Quran? Yeah. We say the Quran begins with begins with M. Mutawatir. Mass transmitted. Yeah, so mass transmitted again is multiple companions. With no no no, the well, the Qiraas also have. A Water. chain, yeah. yeah, they have to have yeah, like yeah. Okay, Islam cool. is it re requires a snod, like that's a form of evidence, isn't it? Yes, so yeah, yeah, so we, we've got mutawatir, we've got chains, but you know, Ananda, you, you're a historical, I mean, you like history and historical student, but how many people will be able to say that I can tell you what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said in Arabic, I can translate it in English, I can tell you which book I got it from, who he got it from. He got it from and I can tell you everybody in that chain. Um, no one that I've interacted with so far. But that's why I quite came here because I often find that when people debate, they often don't want to engage with the beliefs as they are, but as they want them to be. And I've come here to really engage with your beliefs as they are. Not trying to say, oh, well, maybe I can say this or put it in. No. These are your that's beliefs. very nice of you. Now I can engage with them. I can go back and take a look at what I think. And then hopefully we'll come back and have another great conversation. Yeah, 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 definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, just so I wasn't blowing hot air, yeah. um, 
the Prophet peace be upon him said don't kill women and children yeah we get this from Imam Malik yeah, yeah. so I'm sure you're aware that before Imam Bukhari Sahih the most authentic because book was Imam Malik's Muatta yeah, so Imam Malik Guru Salafi is not Imam Malik everybody loves <laughs> every, not for everyone does, but especially yeah. the uh... so Imam Malik he narrates from Nafi Nafi narrates from Abdullah bin Umar and Abdullah bin Umar narrates from Muhammad peace be upon him okay. so this is a chain you clear, can, clear. Yeah, yeah, very so clear. So water is, is, is not is a small section. So Muta water is fantastic. Muta water is so this is one chain. Then you've got another chain with a different chain. Then you've got another yeah. ch uh, chain, yeah. and all of them are verifying that particular thing. For example, the Prophet splitting the moon. That comes from so many companions, yeah. from so many different chains that it actually becomes illogical. It becomes um, unreasonable, rather unreasonable for you to say. You know what? all of them made it up mm. and no but then what's interesting here is because again you're a historical guy we have somebody in india ah but that's inside a muslim source i've read that it's not it's not an external source that's not the king of no, Kutala, there's no external source that's not the king Islamic. the king of Kutala is what the claim is no 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 he, it wasn't him it was actually the the there's a video by um sheikh uthman ibn farooq if you type in uthman ibn farooq splitting of the moon in that video he's he's got the documentation on the screen and you've got certain companions that had narrated that when they were non-muslims sure okay. that's the first thing second thing is there was there was a non-muslim there was a non-muslim who had not yet accepted islam that said so. he was sorry that said that no that that said that he saw the moon being split yeah he saw he saw the moon being he saw the moon being split, yeah. So he was not a Muslim, and then he went to um, the Muslims and he accepted Islam. So that's historical, uh, historically not only documented, but there is a mosque. The, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, he actually tweeted this to, to Saudi to say that look, we have this mosque. I really should have memorized the name, but I. Just came across it like two days ago and it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> no but it would have been nice because you're a historical student you would i would have looked after we'll come back to this video I'll, yeah I'll it, would, it would have been nice to give you the name but that's but Sheikh uthman ibn farooq his his um video on splitting of the moon there is historical evidence of somebody who's not a muslim from india who witnessed and then accepted islam till today there is a mosque that's named after him so so there is historical evidence there is testimonial evidence so we we have stuff like this bro even in, in Islam when you look at our oldest manuscript or when you're talking about the Quran you know the oldest manuscript is Birmingham actually manuscript. is the Birmingham manuscript. So the problem I have with that is that the dating it gives carbon dating is very wide and the main problem with its dating and I'm not certain anything about it more than just this is that the dating gifts are arranged from two years before the Prophet's birth so a long time into his life. No, it actually goes to 632. Exactly, right? It's, it's actually so 568 to 632. Exactly. That's a, so, I mean, obviously, we're going to have to say it comes from sometime in that time. But I don't know exactly when it was. But, but that's carbon dating for you. Exactly, right? So it's, yeah. like it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing I'm nervous of in terms of No, no, but I don't, I don't think you should be nervous. I'll tell you why. Well, because that was carbon dated by the University of Oxford. You know that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I agree, I agree. Portfolios. I have no problem with yeah. the Birmingham Institute. But all the, the but, but all kind of you know academia baggage on on one side. Don't you think that's kind of remarkable? That 1400 years, we have four folios that we found. It's actually in a non-Muslim country because that was a criteria that you said non-Muslim country. No, what, I meant, what I meant when I said we need Western academics. Is no, no, I, I got what you said, but what I'm saying is, if it was like the top capi one in Turkey. Somebody yeah. could still say, oh yeah, but it's in Turkey, but it's this, but yeah, even it could, if it's not... It could have another origin, yeah, right? People could say all sorts of things. They could say, well, we don't know that it didn't, wasn't written at this time, and this yeah. has been there all that time, so yeah. Sure. But when the Bible doesn't assert that we have manuscripts dating to the time of compilation, to the time of Jesus, the Torah doesn't claim that. The Vedas don't comp uh, claim that. Well, the but Vedas claim a strong origin. The, the Vedas, no, I'm talking about manuscript. Yeah, manuscript yeah, but, but, evidence. Uh, but when you say manuscript, that's just that's just this unfair to the way in which preservation took place in Indian culture. So before no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of listening. Let me let me say a little two, two things. Right? You know, you know why I wanted to interrupt there. 
because I wanted to make the point and then I wanted to hear your answer because if you then make the point and I'm like oh I wish I'd completed that's why I go on, go on. yeah so look I, I'm not saying that it's only manuscript based what I'm saying is that just like we have a oral tradition we have a live language yeah. and we have manuscripts three-pronged uh, preservation of the Quran so I'm saying that again I was talking about the manuscript and I was saying that okay sure. uh, they don't make the claim of the manuscript go ahead sure so that's what I'm saying yeah. when it comes to preservation of the Vedas and I'm not I have no reason to actually defend this yes. yeah. but what, from what I understand okay, the, 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 it makes references to, to places and times that archaeologically we prove like for example there's a river that talks about a dried up in 10,000 BC and it talks about that river for example right? right so it's clearly pointing A but it's pointing back to a clear point in time so we should claim its origin, 10,000, 15,000 BC, right? Also the, the archaeological, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's been peer reviewed, yeah, yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah? From my understanding, I could be wrong, rain or so. Okay. I don't remember exactly. Because I haven't heard that claim from them. Okay, what I, well, actually, where I watched it, there's a video on YouTube called Hinduism is playing logically, it's by some German Western scholar, and he talks about this, right? He talks right. about this, right? You can find this like an hour. And what he basically says is that we were talking about India, we're talking about a place that didn't have rights. Do you remember the channel? Oh, it was like Hinduism in Germany, something like that, something Fantastic. along those lines, right? Okay. And basically what they say is that the Old Testament, because it references information that is before the time of its writing, it must have some transmission back to that time. I'm also going to assert that they recited that daily, right? The same way, even if, say, mystically, Ahmed dies, the Quran just disappears, right? Just in that moment, every written Quran is gone, right? That does not mean that every day because it's recited, we're going to forget Surah al and Surah al class. We're not going to need a Quran to work if you want you to keep transmitting that knowledge, right? You could have no Quran and you today could teach your son Surah Al-Fatihah because it's his son Surah Al-Fatihah and it's going to be preserved, right? Very that is the way it's preserved. Exactly, it's like, right? We as Muslims make so the, the claim. The Vedas is preserved the same way. The daily recitation from student to teacher to student to teacher. Would you say, because for the Quran, we say if every single copy of the Quran was burnt today, yeah, yeah, we, know, yeah. Yeah, we could reproduce it from the beginning to the end, exactly, right? from memory. So but the Vedas. Vedas, would you say if every single copy of the Veda was burnt, we'd have the same Vedas yeah, yeah. reproduced? Yeah. But in order to have that, you would need people that have memorized the Vedas yeah, today. So are there people yes. that have mass, that, that have memorized the Vedas yes. from the beginning That's to the like end? The whole thing. They do. They remember, I, they I, I've never heard of this before. Yeah, this is like this is the tradition. This is this is even if in Buddha, if we read the Buddhist history, Buddhist I haven't come across a single Hindu that claims yeah, yeah. to memorize the Vedas. This yeah, is very never, unusual. Because, because that's not okay. So we're, we're you you want to make this categorical statement on camera, yeah? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because you're, you're you're kind of straw man in my position. Okay? So I'm gonna explain why you're confused. Okay, okay, okay no so problem, saying, no problem. I'm not saying the layman. I'm not saying the layman does it. Right. I'm saying the Brahmin does that. You no problem, no problem. Yeah. I, I don't think I straw man that bit. Well, you're kind of saying that, oh, you think average Hindus. I'm not saying that. Did I say average? Yeah, you did. You did. You okay, my mistake like, then. Yeah, my so mistake. Kind of like I was talking layman. I'm not talking layman. My mistake. Yeah. Let me clarify then. I haven't come across a single Hindu that claims to have memorized the Vedas and I've there's never... A good, there's a really good reason why. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so basically a Brahmin is only really a Brahmin according to tradition as long as he remains in India. If he leaves, he's not really considered a castus is once you leave India, right? So a Brahmin, someone that's going to be getting the tradition of the Vedas passed down to is only really going to be found in India. So you're not going to find that in other places, but the tradition of it is very, very... No, hard. but even if a Brahmin is in India, there's so many ways that information can reach us through social media, through yeah, peer-reviewed sure journals. I'm sure if you look into you'll find... I have! <laughs> I'm telling you because look, I've, I, I come to Speaker's Corner, I speak to people and I make this claim that no other holy book from the major religions is memorized from A to Z, mass memorized, but for you, I'm saying let's just say even five people. Five Hindus that have memorized the Vedas from A to Z. I'm That's sure. why I'm, I'm shocked. I mean, okay. I'm absolutely, I'm really I, shocked. I think, I think we're both kind of semi terror that none of us are going to have to bring absolute evidence. So no, 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 it's not about, it's not about evidence. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> no. The, the, the claim thing, is, is that we cannot find X thing. If I can then come no. back with evidence, No, at, at, the, at the moment, at the moment, I haven't asked you for evidence. At no, the moment, I'm saying, no, no, listen, I'm not actually 
I'm not actually pushing back at you. No, no, I'm not saying you're right. I'm saying that yeah. you made a claim. You made a claim that something is true in the world. Yeah. There is not even five Hindus I could find. Yes, so remember yes, I say this. yes. So I'll come back to you maybe in the next couple of weeks. And I'll yes, yes. It, I'll you can do, you can do. I've made an inductive statement, no problem. Yeah. So, but, but the point that I'm trying to say here is, I'm, I'm surprised that, that um, it's the first time I've heard somebody say that no brahmins memorize the vedas from beginning to end but they recite it every day no they they, they may recite chunks of it i don't deny the fact yeah, that but chunks if you go of, if, if the recital through the years from start to finish and for example even buddhist monsters i could i could show you a bunch of monks reciting the dhamma chakra Bhagavad, the buddhist first sermon all across the world without a single without any of the means of but they have memories, all the sutras are memorized, all the important fundamentals are memorized. It's the same but the Vedas are going to be structured throughout the year. The same way we have sutras that we say at different times of the year. These things are memorized and known by daily group recitation, right? So Hindus, Vedas, those are the Vedas. Daily oral recitation. This is how it works. So it's the same way you pray Surah al fatah every day, you will not forget Surah al fatah tomorrow. Right? Okay, I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I guess I was expressing my wonder at the fact that I'm, I'm hearing this. Um, this claim being made, but I mean, you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, you're, you're going to go back and you're going to. Um, yeah, yeah. If I'm wrong, I, you know, I'm a humble guy. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 of course. Uh, but but I wasn't asking for like um, no, no, pull this out. But, no, no, but when you make a yeah. statement that something's true in the world, we're going to only determine whether that's true based on the evidence. We can't yes, just, yes. If, if we were just wandering into the park and you just said, oh well. That tree is blue. I'm not going to say, oh, oh yeah, that's just true now it's been said. No, no, we're going to say, well, wow, how do we know that, right? So I guess the point that I'm trying to say is that when, it, when you ask a Muslim, has somebody memorized the Quran? We will, we will scream and shout it from the top of our lungs. Yes, six-year-olds, this to that. When it comes to people of other faiths, no one makes that claim. There's no, there, there's no kind of documentary. When it comes to Hufaz of the Quran, there's documentaries in English, in Arabic, in Urdu, in German, in Spanish. Yep. Yeah, whether people in Saudi, whether people in Pakistan, there are certain people that don't leave, don't leave Darlooms in India. There are certain people that don't leave institutions in Saudi, but yet the information of them memorizing the Quran goes far and wide because every Ramadan we recite the whole Quran. Yep. So there's clear explicit ways in which it's done. So, exactly, and I'm saying it's clear explicit in the Hindu and Buddhist yeah, tradition but, but, too. But, but my response to that is, it's never come up in journals, it's never come up in... Which you know, journals are you reading? Well, academic journals. But who? Like Any of them scholars of Hinduism or Buddhism? Well, yeah. But, like who? You, you've got... Do you like, know Richard Gombrich, for example? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, look, when you look at peer-reviewed journals, yeah. I mean, we don't tend to memorize the name of the, of the people. No, I mean, if someone, if someone is making an academic claim, I think you ought to know who the academic is. It's not an academic claim, it's more of a sociological say, no, claim. Remember, we're talking about chains and knowing who said well. We can't say, oh, someone yeah. wrote something in a journal, but I don't know who. That's, okay. that's, that's going back to your own reliability. Okay, thing. okay, let's push back a little bit. So, sociologically, if I'm saying, because bear in mind, I didn't say when you said, no, I've come across these, I, uh, you know, there's Brahmins, there's these people, there's that people. Yeah. I said, that's very surprising, I haven't heard that. And you said, yeah. okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to. I didn't say you're wrong. No, no, you didn't say I'm wrong. Yeah. But you did make a previous categorical statement in which other religions do not have this thing. Yeah. So that's it a was, categorical statement that's true about the world. It's, yeah, it's a categorical statement, but it's an inductive categorical yeah, exactly. statement. Exactly. So, so like I'm, uh, which is fine. open to being yeah, 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 proven yeah, yeah. to be false. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's fine. Yeah. So there's, there's no issue with that. You could make an inductive, uh, a inductive yeah. categorical statement like you did with the hadith. I then gave you an answer. And then you said, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So similarly, I guess what I was hoping was just like you're popping up with certain names. I was hoping maybe you'd give me a name and I could say, ah, but you did admit that, okay, I don't know. I can find out and then we can yeah, reconvene yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. I'm, I'm conscious of your time as well. <laughs> if there's anything else that you want to do, because you did give me five minutes and I apologize for taking no, longer no, no, because this you know- been a good conversation. It like, has, it has. It, I enjoy being able to intellect, like I'm saying, engaging with people's beliefs and people that are going to represent them as they're actually. Because you can get into a debate with any Muslim, any Christian, any anyone, yeah. any, even any atheist, but they might not actually represent the position in its most clear and fair way. You have done an excellent job of it representing the Islamic position, the Sunni position, very excellently. So, whether I can engage with that, I can go back and look at what you show me and understand it, 
and I can actually engage with it properly and fair, not just like, oh, and before I only knew that majority of people just go to Albert Park. So that's what I would go by. That's with my knowledge. You, so you're giving me further knowledge that I can now go look at that stuff and say, what is this stuff? What is this saying? What can I understand it to the view of history and world? Just before you go, because you're a Buddhist, I'm guessing you probably have more understanding of Buddhism and its scriptures. Sure. So when it comes to memorization, I'm not going to stop you because again, your time is there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just so, a homework of mine because yeah. you said people have memorized the Buddhist scriptures. Yeah. I wouldn't say in, in majority because because it doesn't it's not like a revelation or anything. Right? Five or six. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, all the major things, yeah. Most monks are gonna know. Can you give me things. stuff that I could maybe go back and check? Yeah, if you want to check out maybe Richard Gombridge or actually let me see I'm charging up. Oh my phone is dead, never mind. But I wanna say that that generally speaking, my understanding of the academic view is that the transmission of the text comes through Buddhist councils. So we have the first Sangha Council after Buddha's death. That follows through to about 50 years after with the second Sangha Council where certain groups are expelled. So kind of like there's this view of this eternal Buddha nature established by this group we call the Mahasangika, which is which we then they get expelled, they kind of move towards China, right? And then we get a third Buddhist council where the Emperor Ashoka basically wants them to affirm what they've affirmed in the previous two councils and make sure that's all still correct by their elders. So the transmission is through the elders, right? Do you, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but would you say Buddhism is a religion? Yeah. Or it's just a way of living? I would say it's religion. I'd say the understanding of the way of life comes from a period of Buddhism's interaction with Orientalism. So when Buddhism wanted, when Buddhism and Hinduism were presented to the West, they wanted it to be perceived outside of the sphere of religion because the sphere of religion for the West was very Abrahamic. They didn't see themselves in that framework, right? And they also didn't want to... I think they were nervous of cosmological comparison, if I'm honest. I think that's one of the reasons why they don't believe certain things. I'm, I'm not had a very particular way they wanted to present. So you're saying Buddhism's been warped over time? I'd say by... not, not warped because it's all still there. The canon is there. What Buddha said is there. You can go back to that time and time again. People can go off however they like. The same way you can find a Muslim who says, I believe Ali is God. We can go back to the Quran and say, hey, well, the Quran doesn't say that. But we okay. can't, but, you know, you can get people who believe whatever they want in right. any group of beliefs, right? So you're saying Richard Gombridge is a good kind Richard, of sign for Richard you? Richard Gombridge is a very good sign. And he talks about memorization as well? Or? He's going to talk to you about why he thinks that the scripture... Sam. Can he talk to you about why he thinks the scripture is preserved? Shahad ala Muhammad bin Abduhu Rasulullah. Mashallah. You know what you say? Yeah. So I just took Shahad, I started praying and yeah, I was just, I was into it, you know what I mean? It felt right. I was kind of unprepared, I didn't realize I was into it. Wa alaykum, may we all make du'a that we enter Jannah, may we all make du'a that Allah does not permit us to enter the hellfire, may we all make du'a that we are among the rightly guided. Ameen. Ameen. Make du'a for us as you my brother. Ya Allah, please grant us all hidayah. Ya Allah, please grant us all strength. Ya Allah, Amen. please choose us to make us Allah. Ya Allah, please allow us to make our hajj and all such obligations. Amen. Unto you Allah. Amen.